two times. How about joining in with us and singing at this time? How many were singing? How many wish you could have been singing? All right. Most of you raised your hand, but I didn't see your mouth moving. How in the world can you sing that way? But all right. Here we go. Let thy glory fill the temple. Now I see them. Let thy glory temple once again as we gather together with one accord let thy glory fill the temple once again oh how I love Jesus
Praise the Lord. Thank you, orchestra. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I'm sure that you love Jesus tonight. And I'm glad we can love him, whether the sun's shining, whether it's raining, whether it's snowing, whether it's sleeting. Praise the name of the Lord. I heard twice from up north this week, and uh, both times they said it was cold up there. I said, move over, it's cold down here, too. They couldn't believe it when I told them it was going to be about 8 last night last night last night they said down in texas I said, oh. and uh, but praise god uh, one thing about it it doesn't last so long down here Amen. when it gets that that <laughs> cold up there it stays that way for about a week or so but uh, i'm so glad that it doesn't stay that way long here and they say this week now it's supposed to get on up there again yeah close to 70 before next weekend Praise God. You know what this weather is reminding me of? We held a meeting, uh, oh, years ago in Phillipsburg, you know, where, where uh, Dave Wilkerson was, you know, where he passed. Uh, we held a revival in, in that uh, town, and uh, every Saturday we had a blizzard. Every Saturday. And Sunday, Nobody could get there in the morning. I'm, I'm, when we had a blizzard, we didn't have an inch and a half or two inches like we had here. We had several feet. Hello. And uh, they'd, they'd all have to plow out and shovel out Sunday morning. But Sunday night, that place was packed. I mean, and, and, hello? I told him he told that before. Well, I'm telling it again. <laughs> and... Uh, but I said that to say this, that's what this weather's like. You know, it, it gets nice about the middle of the week, and then comes the weekend, we, we have this, you know, just so folks can't go to church. But praise God, some of us can go anyhow. Praise God. Hallelujah! Glory. Glory to God. Well, we better sing. Huh? Yeah, I told Tis falling on the housetops, tis pattering on the roofs, tis beating against the window panes as the Holy Spirit moves, tis falling in the vineyard and on the fields of grain. Lift up your heads, you people, and drink and drink again. Falling, falling, showers of the latter rain. Falling, falling, ere our Lord returns again. Open, open, and drink, O thirsty ground. Of a great abundant rain, I hear the joyful sound. Lift up your heads, ye people. Lift up your faces, too. Open your mouth to sing his praise, and the rain will fall on you. Take down your broad umbrellas, put unbelief away. With trusting, yielding hearts, receive the Holy Ghost today. Falling, falling, showers of the latter rain. Falling, falling, ere our Lord returns again. Open, open, and drink, O thirsty ground. Of a great abundant rain, I hear the joyful sound. The thirsty hearts are gladdened, the parched souls are drenched. Beneath the mighty downpour, our burning thirst is quenched. And soon in clouds of glory, our Lord shall come again to take us up to heaven with him for a to reign. It's falling, falling, showers of the latter rain. Falling, falling, ere our Lord returns again. Open, open, and drink, O oh, thirsty ground. Of a great abundant rain, I hear the joyful sound. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise the name of the Lord forever. Well, I tell you, God's great. I'm not going to uh, see if I have it here. No, that's not it. I thought I had something else here, but I don't. But uh, at camp meeting last summer, we heard, I heard another song. 
and it's to the tune of uh, long ago. And uh, the words are a little different than what we usually sing long ago. Maybe I'll uh, bring that sometime and, and either read it or sing it for you. But I'm glad what we had long ago we can still have now. Praise God. Everybody that's here, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Those of you that aren't here, say, oh, my. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I had a, another message that I thought I was going to preach tonight. And, uh, in fact, ever since Brother uh, Pastor, Brother Martin, asked me to preach tonight, I had this other theme on my mind, on my heart. Uh, but uh, today, as I was praying and looking to the Lord, He kind of changed my mind. And uh, so I'll just preach what He put on my heart today, all right? I uh, want to read one verse of Scripture very familiar to you from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. 1 Kings, chapter 19. And it's verse 41. Now, I'm only reading this one verse. I'll, I'll deal with the account, with the incident that happened. But uh, I'll just read this one verse because it's really my text. 1 Kings, chapter 19. Oh, did I say 19? It's 18. Did I say 18 before or 19? Uh, well, I'm sorry. I was a chapter ahead of myself. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. There is a sound of abundance of rain. Not until I took a quick glance tonight up here on the platform did the thought come to my heart and to my mind about the sound of abundance of rain. That doesn't mean it was raining. It means it sounded like it was going to rain. How many know what that sound is? Hmm? It's thunder. Hello. It's thunder. And when you hear in the distance the rumbling of the thunder and you see the lightning flashing and, of course, as it gets closer, sometimes you feel and hear and sense the moving of the wind, then you say, I believe it's going to rain. Ha -ha. Somehow I get the idea, if I don't trip, sometimes I get the feeling, somehow I get the feeling, it's going to rain. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know why, but this is what God wants me to preach tonight. I have a feeling. I get the feeling. There's a rumbling in my soul. There's a rumbling in my heart that God is getting ready to send the rain. <laughs> Hallelujah. That God's getting ready to do something. Perhaps, I don't know, it may be something that he's never done at Faith Tabernacle before. I don't know. Or it may be a repetition of something that he's done in this church. But somehow, I believe God is getting ready to do something. Let's pray and ask him tonight to anoint the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the promise of your word. Oh, Lord. We heard this morning that you are not a man that you should lie, nor the, neither the son of man that you should not perform it. And God, there's too many of us who have felt that you're getting ready to do something for it not to be so. Dear God, help us tonight. Lift our faith, lift our hearts, lift our eyes. Until, as the disciples said, when they lifted their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And I pray tonight, O oh Lord, that we'll see Jesus high and lifted up, sitting on the throne with his, hallelujah, with his train filling the temple. Oh, 
God and will answer, Here am I, Lord. Send me, use me, fill me, thrill me. Let it rain upon me. Copious showers of revival. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. I ask it humbly in Jesus' name and for the glory of God. Amen. All right, if I move that, it's better to move it than fall over it, isn't it? Now, looking over the congregation tonight, I don't think there's anybody sitting out there. I don't think. Now, uh, you may be, but I don't think anybody's out there that does not know the story connected with the scripture that I read tonight. You know that prior to this, in fact, just before this, Elijah had been up on the mountain, and he proved to Israel and to the prophets of Baal and to the king and to everybody else, he proved who was really God. He proved it. They tried to prove that Baal was God. They tried to prove that they had something that was greater than what Elijah had. But Elijah proved, the prophet proved who was really God. When he said, "O oh Lord, let it be known now that you're God and that I'm your servant. Hallelujah. And when he did, the fire fell and consumed the sacrifice. And then Elijah had the prophets of Baal taken care of. He, he, he believed in capital punishment. And he had them taken care of. But now he turns to Ahab and he says, you know, it's been a long dry spell. Three and one half years it had not rained. But he said somehow, I hear, now I don't believe he heard that with his natural ear. I don't think he said, hark, listen, I think I hear the sound of a, a, a thunder somewhere. Because if that would have been the case, Ahab would have heard it also. And all the rest of the people there would have heard that were still left, uh, would have heard the sound of thunder. But it was only Elijah who said his servant didn't even hear it. When his servant went out to look like Elijah told him to, he hadn't heard the thunder. He didn't hear anything about a sound of abundance of rain. But it's kind of like, I think our pastor, was it tonight you said that? I think it was. That he said about the coming of the Lord, that you've got to have your ear in tune. You've got to be ready. You've got to be expecting. And the rapture should not be a surprise to us. And, and being in glory and in the presence of God should not be a great change and a great difference we've been getting ready for it for a long time and it'll just be another step it reminds me of when they stepped on the moon and they said that's one a little step for us but it's a giant step for what for for earth or, or mankind or something like that and it's going to be one giant step when we leave this earth and we step into the presence of our God but oh I pray that God will get your ear and my ear in tune to the fact that here's something going to happen. There's something coming up and get ready for it. Expect it. Get everything out of the way. Plow the land. Clear the land. I heard of a black preacher years ago who got down to pray for his church. It wasn't anything much moving. He said, Oh, Lord, send a revival. God said, I can't send a revival. There's too many dead stumps in the way. And he just, you know, thought maybe he's imagining that. So he kept praying, Oh, God, send a revival. And God said, I can't. There's too many dead stumps in the way. He said, all right, Lord. He said, oh, Lord, see, clear the land, clear the land, clear the stumps. Yeah. And one by one, the stumps began to die. Hello. And when, <laughs> and when all of those dead stumps were out of the way, he said, now, Lord, let it rain, let it rain, a copious shower, and give us a revival, because all oh, the dead stumps are gone removed 
Hallelujah. I want you to know that we've got to get our mind and our eyes and our hearts in tune for the moving of God. I don't, I don't, hello, 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 hello. I don't think when it comes, I don't think when it happens, it ought to be a surprise to you, a surprise to me, or a surprise, it might be a surprise to some people who said, my, they do a lot of talking over there at Faith Tabernacle, and they do a lot of shouting, and do a lot of running around and twisting the, the cord and everything else. <laughs> uh, but I, I, you know, I don't know if anything's going to happen or not. We've got a surprise for them. I hear a sound tonight. I said, I hear a sound tonight. I hear the thunder rolling. I see the lightning flashing. And I believe God's going to do something for you and for me like he's never done before. And I want to be ready. I don't want to be missing when it happens. I don't want to be off somewhere now unless I'm in revival somewhere. If I am, I'll shout with you. But anyhow, I want to be ready when God sends the rain. Is your... Don't let me do all the work. Is your, is your ear in tune? Are you listening? Do you hear what I'm saying tonight? Well, he said to Ahab... You go get ready, because it's going to rain. He said, you go get ready. And then he went up on the mountain. What did he go up there for? Now, it doesn't say in 1 Kings that he prayed. I noticed that as I read it. It doesn't say he prayed at all. It said he got down on the ground and got his head between his knees, and he sent his servant out to look. It doesn't say there that he, that he prayed, but it does say over in the New Testament, it says Elijah was a man like we are, and he prayed that it would not rain, and it didn't rain. And then it says he prayed again, and it did rain. So he must have prayed up there on the mountaintop. Oh, hallelujah. While he sent Ahab to eat and to drink and to have a good time, he went up there and said, you, you, you just hold on. I'm going to pray and I'm going to talk to my Lord because my Lord controls the clouds. He controls the thunder. He controls the lightning. He, hello. He controls the clouds. He controls the rain. And I'm going to talk to my Lord. You know, there's times when it's best not to talk to anybody else but to talk to the Lord. Lord, oh, oh, if our Pentecostal people could get back to talking to God instead of talking to psychiatrists, uh, hello, Amen. and counselors, and yeah. now, 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 there are times when it's good to talk things out. I, I don't deny that. And as I say, get it off your chest. But sometimes when you get it off your chest, you just put it on someone else's chest, and they already have something on their chest, and so they've got a double load just because you put your load off on them. And it does help, I know, sometimes just to be able to, to talk. I got a call today from Pennsylvania again. And a young preacher up there is just having a hard time. The board's giving him a hard time. And, 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 and the church is giving him a hard time. They, they, they're telling him what to preach and what not to preach. And uh, the, they, they said, we ought to have a vote. And he said, what for? He said, whether you get to stay or whether you have to leave. He said, I don't think I'll go along with that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, one of his deacons said, well, I think I'll, 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 I'm getting ready to resign. And he said, Brother Kenny, what should I do? I said, let him resign. <laughs> and you might, hello, you might be a lot better off because I know the fellow, and I know he's been a hindrance in that church for a number of years. And, and you'd be better off if you say, just, just accept his rec resignation. Hello. And then say, oh, Lord, I want you to do something in this church. I want you to do something. Uh, uh, with these people and with me, with my heart and my life, oh God, uh, I'm going to talk to you about it. And he said, shall I go and talk to that fellow? I said, no, 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 don't talk to him. Talk to the Lord. Pray about it and, and seek the face of God. And sometimes God works things out uh, when you don't have to say a word to anybody. Hello. In fact, our talking to people a lot of times makes things worse. Hello. Instead of making it better. Because I know that God can
can do in a few minutes and a few seconds in the hearts of men and women what we can't do by a week or six Sundays of talking to them and trying to straighten them out. If God can't straighten them out, you might as well shut up and take it easy because if, <laughs> if God can't straighten them up, you certainly can't straighten them up. Hello? Praise God. But anyhow, I think we need to say, oh, Lord, we're going to pray for the reign of God. Now, listen. And I don't know. You didn't tell us, and you're not about to tell us, and I'm not going to ask you now or any time who it was. You, you, you said, somebody said, uh, it's dead around here. Is that what you said this morning? It, it, well, services are dead. And, and I got to wonder, where have they been? I mean, where have they been? They, 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 I don't know who they were, but, but I wonder if it's somebody that wasn't even here. And they, <laughs> but anyhow, they're dead around here. Boy, you couldn't have been around here in the last few weeks and go away and say it's been dead. Hello. But, but any old crank can say that. I'll say that again. I got a few nods, and I'll say it again. I said, any old crank can say that. But if that's all you're going to do is sit around and say it's dead around here, uh, you're not helping the situation at all. Hello. And, and for people to say, my, it's dead, <laughs> it's dead in this church. Uh, uh, well, if, if the church is dead and you come here, that means you're dead. Oh, no, 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 not me, just the church. Well, you come here, don't you? You're, you're part of the church, and if you're not dead and you come here, then the church can't be completely dead because you're not dead, right? But if, but anybody, anybody here? But if the church is dead and you come here and it's still dead, that means you're dead too. Uh, but uh, how about how about us saying to God and to one another, I'm not going to let this church die because I'm going to keep going there, <laughs> and I'm not going to die. I'm just going to stay alive. And as long as I go there, it's not going to be completely dead because I'm alive in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if that spirit, we heard this not too long ago, if that same spirit Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. He shall quicken your mortal body by the Spirit of God that dwelleth in you. Hallelujah to God. And I'm alive. I know we sing he's alive. He, and he is. He's alive. But, but because he's alive, I'm alive. You're alive. We're alive. Hallelujah. And we're not going to let it get dead. Glory to God. Mm. Now, while Elijah was up there in that position that he was in, petitioning God, he said to his servant, you go look. You go and, and, and watch. I want you to see. And so his servant went out, and he looked. And he came back with a long face. He, he came back, and, and I can hear Elijah. Now, it's not in the Bible, but I can hear him anyhow. I can, I can hear Elijah. What did you see? Just what I expected to see. Nothing. Does the, <laughs> doesn't the Bible say somewhere according to your faith, so be it unto you? <laughs> Hello. I'm glad it isn't always the fact that God only does things in accordance with the size of my faith. Because if that were the case, he wouldn't do things very often. Hello. Because too many times my faith is weak. How about yours? Too often I'm looking at natural circumstances and natural things, and so my faith kind of takes a dive. And I have to say with, the, with, the, with a man whose servant needed help, I say, Lord, uh, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Yes. And so we have to pray that son. But but this fellow went and he looked, the servant went, and he looked and he didn't see nothing. I, I, I can hear here again. I can hear him saying, Well, I don't know. I've been I've been I've been I've been working with this Elijah for quite a while and I try to be an obedient servant and do what he tells me, but sometimes I get the idea he's just a little far out. <laughs> And he gets himself out on a limb. And I, I, I don't know.
don't know about this, but I'll go see whether he's a real prophet. Because I know the scripture wasn't written then, this scripture. But he, he, if it had been, he'd have read it and he'd have said, Now, if the prophet's word doesn't come to pass, then it wasn't of God. But if it does come to pass, then it was of God. But I'll go look anyhow. <laughs> I, want, I want to advise you about something tonight. You better keep coming. And you better, and you better, do you want to preach? And, and you better keep looking, and you better keep expecting, and you better keep waiting. Hello? Because it's going to happen. I said it's going to happen. I don't know. Maybe that's why. Is it Coxes? Is that their name? Yes, yeah, maybe that's why they're coming at this time, because they're just going to put the, 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 the icing on top of the cake. Hello. And, and, and we're going to see a great move. That may be the time. I don't know. It may be before they get here. Hello. So that when they get here, and I love this as an evangelist, I love to walk into a church that's already in the spirit of revival. Oh, boy. And I want to tell you something, folks. You don't know how much evangelists need that sometimes. Because everybody says, well, when the evangelist get here. Maybe we'll have a move of God. And, and they, they've just closed a meeting. They were so dry yeah, and so lifeless, you know. And they're saying, oh God, help. I hope the next place isn't as dead as this place was. And, and when you walk in and people are there expecting the revival and expecting the power of God, boy, it just builds you up. And you say, come on, let's have a revival. And the power of God falls. Hallelujah. Oh, thank Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. He went out the second time and he came back and he saw the same thing he saw the first time. He didn't see anything. How many know that sometimes you have to keep with it? You have to stay there. You have to stay in there and keep plowing. A lot of times when I write letters to folks that uh, that I uh, that I write to, my relatives or, or my friends, and I say, keep your eyes on the sky because he is coming. And I I say that because, you know, we, we, we're all human. Hello. And we say, I've heard that, and I've heard that, and I've heard that. And when's he coming? Did you ever wake up in the morning and say, dear Lord, I thought you surely were going to come last night. And here I am. I'm still waking up on earth. But cheer up, saints of God. Hold on, saints of God. One of these times, uh, it is going to happen. Well, let me get to the, third, the next time when he came back. And he came back. He said, I saw something. Oh, hallelujah. I see something that I see something now Elijah heard it and his servant saw praise God Elijah heard the sound of abundance of rain the servant saw the little cloud I see something you, excuse me I've been reading in the New Testament and 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 the the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and and several and, and several of the of the gospels it Jesus says concerning people who were listening to him they have eyes and they cannot see they have ears and they cannot hear and and he said to you it is given to know the kingdom of God but to them I speak by parables because they can't see even though they see and they can't understand even though they hear and, and there's a lot of people today who say well well the Lord's coming the end of the world's coming and there's there's no hope there's no you know we might as well give up but I pray that God will anoint our eyes with the eye salve of the Holy Spirit and open our ears once again uh, until we can say oh I sense in my soul that something's going to happen hallelujah and when you sense that in your soul you'll always get ready for it you'll always respond to it and you'll say now I believe is the time when God is going to do something he came back and he said I see something now I used to say there are three responses to that, but the Lord showed me today there's four responses. Number one, I saw something, but it wasn't much. It was just a little cloud. Yeah. Hallelujah. Servant. Court. Servant. 
what did you see? I saw a cloud. Oh, what, what? You, you, you saw a cloud? You, oh, glory to God. No, 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 you don't understand. Don't get too excited. It was just a little cloud. Huh? Yeah. It, don't get all upset and get all uptight. Don't laugh, Sister Arnell. Because, <laughs> because I haven't heard that for a while. Because it, it wasn't a big cloud. It was just a little cloud. Did you have, ever ask God, Oh, God, send a great miracle. And something happened. And you didn't think it was the miracle you prayed for? It was just a, a little something. Mm. Did you ever ask God for $1,000 and somebody hands you the $10 bill? And you said, Lord, you didn't hear me right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I said a thousand. You got the decimal in the wrong place, Lord. Uh, that fellow just gave me a $10 bill. And, and then have God answer you and say, Who's doing this, me or you? <laughs> and I know what I'm doing, and I know what you need, and I know how to supply your need. Hello. But, but we, you know, we, we get the idea that it, uh, something else came to me this afternoon. I got thinking of these mega churches, and, uh, and I got to thinking of, of the corner grocery store. How many, how many are old enough to remember the corner grocery stores? Huh? They were, they were dotted. Every little burg, every little town had at least a, a corner grocery store, you know. Well, it wasn't just groceries. You'd get anything for the farm or anything you needed. But along came Kmart, Walmart, and, and uh, some of the other marts, and, and Kroger's, and, 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 and Sagan, Sagan Run, <laughs> uh, Sagan Run, and, and all these, you know. And they kind of put these little independently owned grocery stores and, and, and convenience stores out of business. They couldn't compete with them because, you see, they couldn't buy the, the volume that, that these other stores did. And so a lot of them had to go out of business. But that's if they were located where these other stores were. But you go back in the country, you go back in some of these little villages where there is no Kmart and there is no Walmart and there is no... Uh, follies, fo follies, or fo uh, follies, or follies, and, and where, where there is none of these big, you know, conglomerates, and they're still there to serve the people. Now, there's something about these big outfits; they buy in volume because they're buying for what the people want. Mm -hmm. Hello. They're going by the wants of the people. But these little grocery stores that, that have been dotted all around were there to give people what they needed. Hello. You ran out of grain. You ran out of seeds. You ran out of milk. You ran, hello. You ran out of flour. You ran out of corn. And you know, you knew that grocery store was always there. Uh, and you could go get it. And, and where they're not affected by these great conglomerates, why, they're still there. And, and people can go there. And when you can't get to town and you can't get to Walmart, uh, thank God there are still some who said, I'm not going to sell out. I'm, I'm going to stay here. And, and I'm going to be here for the needs of the people. Now, I thought of that in relation to churches today. We are living in the time, in the day of mega churches. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And the mega churches are putting a lot of our little churches out of business. The little country church, the little church by the side of the road, where you could go after a hard day's labor or a week's labor, and you could worship God and feel the presence of God and the glory of God. And you could express your need. And there was a bunch of people there that would get around you and pray for you. Oh, my. Uh, but, but you see, it was just the same group of people, for, by and large, for a long time. But now the mega church, a lot of mega churches have caused of our, our, a lot of our other churches to close their door. I've held revival in, 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 in Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. I, we held revivals there 40 years ago. It was a thriving church. It was a, it was a good church. 
and, and we had good revival meetings there. I went back there just a few years ago and a handful of people, and I said, what's happened? What's, what's wrong here? The pastor was discouraged. He was despondent. He did, and since then, he lost his wife to cancer and so on. I said, what's the problem? He said, there's a church over here in Harrisburg, and it's one of those mega churches. And the people have left here to say, we're tired of coming to this little old church. We want to go. And you see, the slogan of these mega churches is, come where the action is. Hello. Come where the action And people are, are so, so thrilled with, with a lot of action and activity that they go there and they forget about that little old church somewhere that's struggling. But I want you to know that God still has churches. And, and I don't want us to be jealous of any mega church here at Faith Tabernacle. I don't want us to say, I wish we could be like such and such a church where they have such and such a crowd. I want us to say, Lord... As hungry hearts come in, as hungry souls come in, help us to have the goods to produce, that we can minister to those people, and that we can help those people because of the power of God and the Spirit of God. When I was pastoring in McAllen, Texas, uh, it, it wasn't a large church. It wasn't a, the building was not near this size, uh, and we had a comfortable congregation. But 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 you know, it, it, compared to some of these others, it would have been called a small church, but I thank God time after time, missionaries who've been over to Mexico and been there for three months, and some of them for six months, if they could stay that long, would come and say, we always love to come back to McAllen First Assembly because we know we can be refreshed here. There's something about the presence of God, and I stood and I begged those people, some of them criticized, just like they do about our services here, you let people get up and testify you know, and shout whenever they want to. And it, there's, there's no order to it. We had that criticism too. But I begged the people, I said, don't ever lose this. Don't ever lose this. Uh, but keep an open heart and a open mind uh, so that when people come in, they can be refreshed fresh, uh, by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Just a little something. But it's a sound and it's a sign of abundance of rain. That's, that's one thing. It's just a little cloud. The, the other is, it's not what I expected. I expected something different than this. And, and that's really closely related to the first one about just a little cloud. Because we get things set in our mind that God has to do it this way. And if he doesn't do this way, we say, I'm disappointed. That's not what I was really looking for. But how about let's let God be God? How about let's let God make the decisions and say what we're to do and where we're to go and when we're to go and what he wants us. I, I, I pray that, that, that in, the, in this month as we come and we pray for the revival, I, I pray that we'll say, Lord, as we come to church, I want you to have your way in my life. I want you to have your, I just want to make myself available to you. Hey, don't miss out on these 15 minute a day prayer meetings. Don't miss out on these two Saturdays. I wish we had, brother, 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 pastor, I wish we had as many around this church praying on two Saturday nights as we have in this congregation tonight. Maybe some of them can't be here, but I, I wish that others who could be here would take their place and we could see this place filled with people who are seeking the face of God and saying, God, we don't want just another meeting. We want a revival. God, we don't want just a series of services. We want to see a moving of the Spirit of God. I want to get to number three quickly because this is what God impressed me with today. The third attitude when you see the cloud is, well, thank the Lord. Hallelujah. And you become satisfied. And you give up and you don't ask for any more. But you see, that cloud was just the preliminaries. Hello. Hello. The cloud was just the indication. Now, I thank God for the moving of the Spirit. 
uh, that's been here in these services. I thank God for these young people who have begun to get on fire for God. But folks, we cannot sit back in our seats and say, bless God, we had it. Bless God. Young people, if you do that, you're going to die on the vine. You're going to wither it up. I, it disturbs me when, when our young people go to youth camps and so forth, and they get so on fire for God, and they come back to our churches, and they sit there, and they don't enter in, and they don't get a touch of God, a fresh touch of God on their soul. And before long, they're deader than they were before they went to youth camp. Come on now. And that can happen in our services. I thank God that, well, more often here than a lot of places, but, but still, it's still once in a while. When God moves and people move in God, people testify, people shout, and a lot of, a lot of activity going on, I thank God for those. But let's not stop there. And you said it this morning, don't park here. <laughs> Don't even think. I have that sign, by the way. Don't even think about parking here. This is just the little cloud, and we're, we're going to get ready for a downpour. Praise God. It would be nice, Brother brother Crab, if I could get this crowd really excited tonight. Don't you think so? Uh, you are excited? Oh, great. Uh, I... <laughs> I, I hope I'm around then uh, when some of the others get. Are you excited? Yes. Oh, yeah. So, uh, are you excited? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. How many are excited tonight? Well, bless all. Bless your heart. Glory to God. What was that you said? They're listening. <laughs> and they don't look like it. You don't. Never lie. Uh, that. <laughs> That, 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 you, you, some of you look like it, but some of you wish I'd shut up and get it over with. But I ain't going to do it, so you might well endure to the end. <laughs> There's one more response to see in that cloud, and it's the response of faith. It's the response that says, I know it. I know it. I know something's going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. that Elijah had. Elijah said, you saw the cloud. I heard the thunder. Something is going to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I read an article about a... <laughs> I, re I think I read it, unless it was on that tape I gave to your dad that time. But anyhow, about this black preacher, and every time he'd get up to preach, he'd, <laughs> he'd say, I see something, I see something, folks, I see something. And one time some of the young people got the idea they were going to pull something, a trick on him. And there was a little, you know, place in the ceiling uh, that you could open up. <laughs> and they got up in there before the service. And that preacher, he'd always, he'd close his eyes and rear back and say, oh, I see something. Glory to God, I see something. Oh, brothers and sisters, I see something. And the, these young people said, oh, get ready now. Oh, when, <laughs> when he does that tonight, we're going to pull that, that little dubovachi off of the hole there. And they were up there with some kind of an animal. I don't know what it was. And they said, when he says that, uh, we're going to show this animal and let's hope he opens his eyes this time and so he was a preacher away and he says oh brothers and sisters I see something I see something he reared back and all of a sudden he opened his eyes and that 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 hindrance came 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 away and he saw this whole animal up there and he said oh bless God I really see something <laughs> hallelujah I tell you, that's, now that wasn't faith, that was sight. But I pray that God will open our eyes tonight and we'll be able to say, I really do see something. I really do hear something. I really do believe something. I believe it's going to rain. I believe it's going to come a downpour. I believe people are going to get the Holy Ghost sitting in their seat. I believe, hello, I'm talking about what we can believe. I believe people are going to be healed 
people sitting in their seat and they'll stand up and shout glory to God hallelujah I was in New Jersey holding a revival I, I was sitting at the piano I think it was New no it was Baltimore and I was sitting at the piano they didn't have a piano player that night and so I was playing the piano a lady stood up and she said oh my back is hurting so bad I can't hide I'm thinking about going home and I said sister I just stood up I said put your hand on your back and she did I said, <laughs> I said in the name of Jesus be healed and boy she had a spell I mean she came unglued and she said whoa, whoa it doesn't hurt oh, it's better I said of course it is what would you expect Wouldn't you like that to happen to you? Yeah. <coughs> wouldn't you like to be sitting here and all of a sudden you wouldn't have to sing the song, but you could say, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the thrill that fills my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole. I want to tell you about what kind of faith Elijah had. He said to his servants, you go tell Ahab, get those horses ready. Get that chariot ready and take off. And he did. The Bible says he, the, the Ahab, went to Jericho. <laughs> But oh my, imagine, <laughs> were you ever gone by the highway and you were obeying the speed limit and all of a sudden, yeah. something went by you and you, whoo, we're, oh, they're in a hurry. They, they, they were speeding. Well, I can, <laughs> hello, I'm going about see with the eye of faith and I, I, I can see Ahab, get out there. Come on, that horses, it's going to rain and I don't want to get wet. Come on, that horses, when all of a sudden, what was that? Oh, that was a man. Yeah, but what kind of a vehicle did he have? He didn't have a vehicle. He was running. <laughs> Hallelujah. What's he running for? Because he knew something was going to happen. He knew it was going to rain. In fact, the Bible says uh, while all this was going on, it began. <laughs> there came a great rain from heaven. Oh, listen to me tonight. I'm... I believe that's what God wants to do. And whether you believe it or not, I'm preaching it because that's what God told me to tell you. And I'm telling you tonight, it's going to rain. I said, I'm telling you tonight, it's going to rain. Praise God. You can bring your umbrella if you want to. But if you do, I pray the Lord will send the wind of the Holy Ghost and turn your umbrella inside out. Won't do you a bit of good. Thank you, Lord. I've been reading the history of the Assemblies of God and of the Pentecostal movement in this country and around the world. And my heart's getting hungry. Amen. I read some of those things that happened, and they didn't have a special speaker from the North either. Hello. There was nobody special as far as a human was concerned. God used them, but they didn't even know God was going to use them. They just went to church and said, Oh, Lord, we want the Holy Ghost to be in charge of this service. And he was. And he did. Alcoholics came in. They called them drunks then. Hello. They came in, and they left sober. Harlots came in, and they left cleansed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Preachers came in to criticize the move of the Holy Ghost and say, we don't believe in this tongue business. And they went away speaking with other tongues and glorifying God. Oh, do it again, Lord. I believe you're going to do it again, Lord. Hallelujah.
as old as Brother Dennis, Dennis is. As old as Brother Dennis is, Lord, send such a revival shower that I'll see him just get up and dance all around this place. Woo-hoo! Hello! Uh, you say, he's too old, he can't dance anymore. You just don't, don't you're not counting on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> uh, don't you discredit the Holy Ghost. He, he can help you to do something you never thought you could do anymore. Uh, I tell folks, they say, are you still kicking? I say, yeah, but just not, just not just as high. But you let the Holy Ghost come. You let the power of God come. And I think I could kick just about as high as I ever did. Because I believe God wants to send that kind of a meeting, that kind of a revival to this church. And I want us to get ready for it. I want, hello, I want us to put up and say, oh, God, uh, don't just send it on the other people. Send it on me. Let it, hello, do it to me, Lord. Do it, hello, do it to me, Lord. Hello, do it to me, Lord. Now, you get that same impression that your son got when he talks to the young people. And he said, they, they sit there, and they don't look like they're listening, but they are listening. You get that on Sunday morning. I can see, hello. And every preacher in this place can feel what you feel a lot of times on Sunday morning when you're teaching and you think, well, I don't know if anybody's listening or not. But they are, brother, to take heart. They are listening. And as one brother told me when I said, somebody say amen, he said, said they're listening too much to say amen. You've just got to give them credit that they're soaking it in. Oh, Lord, are they soaking it in tonight. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. But, hey, if you, if you think it's discouraging me, i got news for you. It ain't. <laughs> Excuse me. It isn't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I believe what God said is going to come to pass. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I beseech you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Don't let, don't let us so close our mind and so close our hearts to the moving of the Spirit of God that we miss what you're wanting to do. Oh God, I pray, help us to get ready for the downpour of the Holy Ghost so that you can let Blue Mound this vicinity, this town, this village, you can, you can let them know that something's happening across the street at that faith tabernacle that will change this town, that will change this community. Oh, God. And, and, and homes will be changed and lives will be changed and homes will be rearranged and the glory of the Lord shall fall upon us. I ask it humbly in the name of Jesus and for the glory of God. Would you stand please? Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, if you're of the mind and of the opinion that things are just going to go on as, as usual, then I pray that God will open your eyes and open your ears. But if you believe tonight that what God says he's able to do and that he will do it, and you want him to do it for you, in you, and with you, I want you to walk right now. I want you to walk up this way. If you believe that God can do and will do what he said, and you want him to do it in you, I want you to walk. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe things are just going to go as usual, stay where you are. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray for you that God will open your eyes and open your mind and open your heart until you see it. Glory to God. You've got to see it. 